Hey guys, I'm Cuboid, and this is my Rotorcraft tutorial series number six, I believe. It may not, um, but yeah, this is actually re recorded because the last one had audio problems, and yeah, they, it, the, my voice was way too quiet, and the Minecraft was way too loud. Um, and then I tried to fix it and it made it worse and but I think I have fixed it now so I may or may not re-record stuff such as the other Rotorcraft tutorials um yeah um okay well, might as well get into the tutorial um so what happened in the last one in the last episode five I think it was uh I don't remember fully but I know I talked about the oh the windmill or the wind turbine um and the soil hydrator and the vacuum and pneumatic item pumps and stuff like that but yeah the soil hydrator it's it does kind of this texture on the ground instead it pretty much has a bigger range it does the same thing as a normal water bucket in the ground would do except it's not an actual bucket of water so you can't fall in it and it also has a larger range and i believe it slightly speeds up plant growth yeah, on to the second part here. Um, there's more than just this part to this video. There's just going to there's I have more set up than just this. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. So into it. So this is the sprinkler. It's one HSLA steel ingot, liquid pipe, and an impeller, and you get four of them. Uh, they look like this. They're meant to be attached to ceilings. Well, not really ceilings. They're meant to be attached to a water pipe, the bottom of a water pipe that's the only way they can receive water um, yep they kinda look like the sprinklers you'd that are in buildings like the fire sprinklers and this looks like more like a garden sprinkler the ground sprinkler um, yes yeah, so the ground sprinkler it's a bit more expensive it takes more steel and you get less of them so this one takes two base panels one impeller and four liquid pipe uh, but except it speeds up plant growth much more and it does have a smaller range than this much smaller range than that these have a massive range um, but the ground sprinkler ha speeds up more growth and it also takes more water just be careful running them at high pressures um, such as like I don't think a normal um, liquid reservoir will do it but an infant a liquid reservoir with set to like infinite with the rotorcraft magic wand will get this thing up to a high enough um, pressure so that it actually damages players in the area and it can get quite annoying and it can actually do quite a bit of damage if you're in in peaceful mode uh, the regeneration it gives you should be enough to counteract it but it's just a thing you don't want um, yeah but in non peaceful modes then well it will be quite annoying the damage so I'll just show you what it does here as well as this one so you can see oh why did the pipes do that again um, just re these there you go so see it has these textures that not textures I have to fly up so you can see them properly because there's a thing with the oh now the pipe fixed itself but there's a thing with the shader so that particle effects cannot be seen against the sky I don't know why but it's a thing but yeah so it has a, again it has a massive range so it kind of sprays water having um, I don't know if Minecraft does it but if you have too many particles it'll start cutting them out so it, they don't instead of like spraying off like they do here they just kind of spray around the thing I don't know if I'll be able to show what it does but it reduces the particle effect but if you're having lag issues with having too many sprinklers, then turn your Minecraft setting, uh, in Minecraft settings, turn your, uh, oh, what is it again? Particle effects off or down. Then the ground sprinkler. There you go. So it kind of does the same as that again it has a much smaller range I believe it's 4x4 four four, so 4 out not really 4x4 four four, but 4 blocks out that which is the same range as a normal bucket of water except 
it sprays much more water and increases plant growth. Um, yep, I know. I think I can go into zero. Yeah, there you can see the damage. That may or may not be because I have no food, but I can remedy that. Just eat some food, so you can actually see the real damage. There you go. So I am on peaceful, so you can see the regeneration is kind of counteracting it. And yes, that is the sprinkler. I know for a fact. And if I walk away far enough, you see nothing but... Yep. I don't think it does more damage when you get closer, but if I turn it off peaceful, you can see that will kill you. That is constant damage. Um... I'm going to do a slight experiment with, what is it? Uh, reservoir. I am going to just move over. Actually, you know what? I can do it back here in this little spot. I just want to see if it'll do the damage if you put a reservoir normally. Yeah, very much. So I don't know how to how one would limit the amount of water, I mean the pressure, but they damage you if you're near them, it seems. If it's too high a pressure, I can show the, you know, instead of me blabbering for a couple minutes, I should just show it here. Uh, uh, one down? Yeah. They're ground sprinklers. So it's a mounted variety, yes, ground mounted variety of the overheat sprinkler I think that's meant to be overhead Meh. typo everyone does them um, and it can put out fire hydrate farmland and increase the growth rate of crops due to the higher water volume it consumes it is more effective than its ceiling for variant note that high water pressures can be dangerous well I don't know how to have not high water pressures so doing these things you might want to have your farm if you use them farther away than you otherwise would. Um, okay, enough blabbering on to the other parts. Oh, and I forgot what I was doing. Oh, yep. Um, fertilizer. It does what it sounds like it does. Uh, let's just grab some canola, canola seeds. Um, yeah. So how to craft it. Uh, it is one impeller, two liquid pipe, a shaft unit, two base panels, and a chest. And it kind of looks like this. Kind of has these like hose things, and it spins, and it receives power from the bottom. And a DC electric engine can be used to power it. It just needs 1.02 kilowatts, which is the exact power that an, a DC electric engine produces. So, yay! I have my seeds. So if I put my seeds here, and I turn on the fertilizer. You can see it makes the growth effects over it. Um, well, that and it can take bone meal. It takes compost. It, it takes uh, bone meal, compost, as well as fertilizer from forestry. And it works quite well. And before I say something else about it, uh, this thing, the angular transducer, is something you'll also want to make as well as with. This for when doing stuff with Rotorcraft, there's multiple items you should have. The first one being the Rotorcraft handbook, second one being the screwdriver, and then the third one being probably the angular transducer. Um, you can pretty much you can right click on things with it and it tells you stuff about it. Well, it well liquid pipes and Rotorcraft things. So it tells you how much water is in them and it'll tell you the range of this thing actually. It tells you where it's receiving the power from. Uh, how much it's receiving and tells you the range so the max range of this is of the fertilizer is 32 meters and its current range is 4 meters so uh, I believe 4 out so so it reached kind of here and kind of like a square the same as that does um, yep so I think that's it about that uh, so, just, so it just says in the 
handbook menu. So the fertilizer, when given appetite or bone meal, can accelerate the growth. It doesn't give an appetite, the actual item here. Oh, I wonder if I can find it in my mods. Here it is. All the way down here. There it is. Wait, no. Here it is. So allow me to just put the appetite in. And break these. See, nothing. It's no fertilizer items. So, appetite doesn't actually work, unfortunately. Because you can just mine that stuff out of the ground. Okay, go ahead and turn this off. Turn this back to daytime. There. Um, yep, yeah, I believe these are the only things it takes in. Uh, on to the next thing. Just gonna remove these things, including this. I'll keep the angular transducer. So, this is the fan. And it takes two base panels, one shaft unit, one impeller, and five wood of any type, I believe. One second. Yeah, five wood of any type. I don't know if they have to be the same type or not. Um, but yeah, I'll show you what it does um, in kind of the later part of the video, in the second area I have set up. But continue moving on. The auto breeder, very simple. It's just five base panels. And it looks like a, um, a reservoir, but with some stuff in it. Not really stuff, it's just, it looks like a reservoir that's been cut in half. Um, and the fan, I kind of forgot to say what it looks like. Is it just me, or does that fan blade in there, kind of, like the actual fan texture inside of it, like, kind of look like a um, obsidian? Guys, look at these holes in that. But I think that kind of fan in there kind of looks like obsidian. But on to the next thing. The bait box. It is just the auto breeder and eight iron bars. No, I don't want that. I'll show you guys the handbook thing. So the auto breeder will lure in animals. When they get close, feed them until they feel like breeding. With this machine, you can quickly amass large herds. Each animal has its own desired food item. Without that item, the machine will fail to attract or feed the animal. Wolves, for example, particularly like raw pork. The food item will be consumed when the animal enters breeding mode. And power, so it requires 16 watts. Uh, not 16 kilowatts about so that's this is the same amount of power as a steam engine outputs and its range is 8 I believe and then it increases depending on how much power it has okay and I just have some stuff set up here so just like I need to grab some things the things have been grabbed okay so first of all the auto breeder so for cows you want wheat I uh, will it tell you what they no it doesn't so let's just put some cows in here let's put two and by turning this on uh, I should do this instead but yep they should it should lure them in and then make them enter breeding mode, and then they should, well, breed. Okay. Just go and get rid of that. So that's how that works. Um, it use it pretty much a um. Whatever item you would use to normally breed the animals, and you put it in there, it will do it with those. I believe you can have multiple types of food in here to breed multiple different types of animals. So if you want, like, pigs and cows, then you can do that. And the bait box. Uh, I should acquire back this wheat. Um, I forgot to say the thing for the bait box. The handbook. Uh, what's it called again? the handbook entry for it. 
So the bait box will attract or repel mobs of all kinds, uh, provided it contains the appropriate items to do so. For example, Endermen are attracted by grass blocks and their opportunity to take them, but are repelled by the faces on soul sands staring back at them. If these items are not consumed, it can also incubate eggs if gently heated. Uh, I'll probably show that function off in a later video. Um, and by going to the next page, it kind of says the stuff. So sheep, attractor, you know what? I'll just let it cycle through and stay quiet. There, it's pretty much done cycling through. So it kind of shows the tractor repel and stuff like that. And its power is requires is that of I. One second. Yeah, so it requires twice the power of the um. Uh, the auto breeder, but. So I not but it requires the power of a gasoline engine. One second. <coughs> okay, there. Um, yep. So it does require the require a gasoline engine for it, but it is really useful. So allow me to just acquire some creepers, some sticks, as well as some obsidian. Well, let's use the sticks first. So remember, it said sticks repel cows. So. Just put the ethanol on the engine, and they should want to walk away from it. I um, just need to acquire an item for Mojo Craft that I will show you how to do later. This is the gravel gun. It just, it pretty much will instantly kill anything you shoot it, that you shoot it with. But yeah, so... As you saw, the cows were repelled by it, and they walk away in any direction. So the ones that try to walk this way will not be able to go very far, but yeah. It's probably useful for keeping endermen or creepers away from your house, or unwanted creatures, or track creatures if you want, such as a mob farm, like slimes, you saw it require like a diamond. Um, yeah, let me show you the creeper one. So, obsidian will repel creepers. So if we put some creepers down. Oh. There. They walk away. So, if you have this running in your house, no creeper is going to sneak up behind you and blow you up. And then, one last thing. The weed. Oh, I got a creeper head. And it should attract cows. Yes. And again, for the... Oh, I shouldn't have destroyed the gas engine from that, but... Allow me just to place this back. There. So, the range of this thing... Its max range is 120 meters, and... Its current range when powered with the gasoline engine is 32 meters. You can use the, oh, what is it again? The steam engine to power this thing. But using the um, gas engine, it has a much bigger range. I'm just using the gas engine because it's easier to kind of set up in a small space. And then here, so you saw it attracts them and stuff like that. This thing's range. Its range, max range is 24 meters, and its current range is 16 when powered by a gasoline engine. And so, let me just remove the cows. But this is it for this section, and I will move on to the next section.
Okay, so this is the other area I have set up with some with a demonstration of the stuff and some other blocks. But yep, yeah, I hear slime. That could be changed in one second. Allow me just to turn it to noon. Just do that. There. Um, okay. So what was I going to do? Um, yep, yeah, so the fans. I showed how to craft them, and I never showed how to use them. Fans, when I never showed their power either. So the minimum power is one kilowatt, so a DC electric engine can power them, but it's not necessarily that good when the DC electric engine powers them, and they, um, they kind of, they can't break plants, and I should have mentioned that before, but when the main one of the other they can blow you around as well as blow items around um, well in the direction common sense says they would blow them but they can also break plants and it's not like they break the full they don't break normal plants they break only full grown crops and they replant the seed after and so I just have a couple am um, under there under the slabs and over here I just have a couple two a um soil hydrators. But yep. So let me just turn them on. I have them just set up with two wind turbines. Yep. Two wind two wind turbines. Why is this here? But yep, I have set it up with two wind turbines. And that's power giving uh, giving me enough power for all three of these. Let's just put the put the shaft there. Putting wool around them does not actually make the noise go away, so I'm sorry if it's a bit loud. It shouldn't be. I turned the Minecraft volume way down. But, yep. So, I'm just going to show you what's going on here. So, I'm just going to turn on this fertilizer here with no fertilizer. Wow, would you look at that? Just grab some compost. And I'm just going to put some in there. There we go. Turn that on. So it starts. I have a gearbox, an 8 to 1 gearbox in here, um, set to torque. And again, the more torque this thing has, the more range it has. I don't know exactly how much range that it has. I can show you in a second. So it currently has the range of 10 meters, so it's reaching out to about over here-ish. So yep. Yeah. So, and the lower the speed, the less, the less fertilizer it uses, but the less it actually, the fertilizes things. Um, okay, so you see the fans are blowing them off. Uh, there, so with the angler transducer, you can see the kind of, the large blue area is the area in which it will break crops. And the smaller blue area in the middle there is kind of a, um, I think that's the one where it blows players. Yeah, so right, so the small blue line in front of it is where it will b blow players, but the large blue box around it is where it harvests things. I don't know about items either, let me test. I should probably get rid of the item vacuum for that. Oh, now that's lost, isn't it? Gone into the ME system. Okay, I can just use the stone bricks. For Actually, you know what? I can just use these. The canola seeds. If I give myself some more. There. So, in front of the thing, it blows the items, but to the in the middle, no, it doesn't. So only the area right directly in front of the fans will blow items or other entities but in the in between it'll harvest them but it won't uh, it won't blow them away so I'm just gonna turn the item vacuum back on to actually collect the items and help pull them uh, this is just being powered by a steam, steam engine you might be able to hear it underground 
and just this DC electric engine here powering the pneumatic item pumps that just go into the ME system. And this hasn't been running for that long, but you can see it amasses quite the amount of canola seeds, especially with the fertilizer running, but you can go even further. I just need to hoe some of the dirt because it has unhoed. And again, canola seeds can only cannot be planted if they um they can't be planted if the soil is not hydrated. And if you hold a block in your hand, yes, this weird shadow over this area is actually all these fans displaying their blue areas. But for some reason, the shaders only recognizes that as a shadow when you're holding up certain things in your hand. So that's weird, but it's a thing. I don't think the soil hydrators can keep up with the amount of dirt I have here. So I have these spots where you can place these ground sprinklers. I'll show you the range of these things. This episode might be a long word of craft tutorial, but you can skip through to the different parts if you feel like it. Or hopefully you can watch the whole thing. And you can see I'm getting a slight stutter. I don't know what's my frame rate. Uh, 60, 70 FPS. So it's fine. It might just be stuttering for me because I'm actually using a TV as a monitor because I no longer, I don't have a computer monitor yet. So it's not the best thing, but it works for now. Yep, so you can see with these with these four ground sprinklers, you can see it they really grow quite fast. Then add the fertilizer onto that, it grows even faster. And you can go even further, adding another normal sprinkler. Lots of water particles flying everywhere. And you can see that's that's going to grow quite a bit of canola. You can also probably use carrots or potatoes or wheat in this farm. But yeah. And instead of this going to an ME system, you might want an ME system because the normal chest would fill up quite quickly with 113,000 canola seeds. But I'm just going to turn these off because I'm going to get rid of. I need to get rid of some of these particles. But there you go. And I should move on from this, but now you know how to use the fans. And this massive wheat field is the max range of the sprinkler. And the thing I said earlier about how sometimes if you have a lot of particles at some point, it'll kind of break the sprinkler and the particles won't fly out fully. Well, this is what I mean. You can see here, they're just kind of stopping. Yet it's still displaying the particle effect on the ground here. It looks kind of weird, but... So the sprinkler, this is its range. I have no idea, but what's this say? Eight meters, I don't know, what is this? One, two, I don't know, that looks about eight blocks. I'm not, I, I'm gonna assume it's correct and this thing has a range of eight, eight meters right now. Um, but yeah, it is getting a very high pressure, so the pressure might change the range, but it has a very large range. And I did leave this kind of area of dirt here to show that this is indeed its full range and it displays this kind of water texture over the areas it affects and here it does not display that texture so it doesn't go there and for the ground sprinkler it has a range of four meters oh don't want to do that it says its range is eight meters i think it's lying because i made a out in the world there i made a large square and I put that thing in the center and it only watered a four by th um it only w watered a four uh, I don't know it only watered four blocks out from the sprinkler and the thing for the soil hydrator it's I don't I don't think I can keep up with the max amount of water but its range is like is six um blocks but it's in kind of a circle and these outer blocks it doesn't reach very well and you can see it's like not hydrating this part but if you put in more of them I think it would hydrate it better then now on to this end part videos almost over I think 
you know, at the end of the video, I am going to have a thing where I show the my test I did where I put the ground sprinkler in the middle of an area out in the infinite of nothingness. But, yep, so this thing, very useful, this one, the woodcutter. Uh, it requires a 2x gear unit, two saws, two HSLA steel ingots, and three base panels. And that gives you one woodcutter. And it requires 16 kilowatts of power and at least 64 newton meters of torque, which can be all. W actually, no, that can't be given by. Yeah, I, I have a steam engine running up here. I don't know how much is this thing. What's this thing's torque? So, no, that can't. What I said before was kind of false. It can't be applied by one steam engine. You must add a two to one gearbox set on torque there. You can probably use any gearbox for that, including wood. Oh, yeah, you see it spins and does stuff. Just empty my inventory here. Actually, I have stuff in the chest. I have my saplings, my bone meal, and this, and that. These will all be used. Okay. I should have put torches around here. You know what? I'm not going to do it now. What's the point? So, oak sapling. I'm going to set it today quickly. So I would you can use you can use the um the compost to a um grow oak saplings, but I'll show you the issue with that after. Let me just show you what this thing does. So when the tree is fully grown, it slowly but surely starts breaking the leaves, starts with the leaves, and then when it's done with the leaves it will go move on to the wood and it w if there's not a chest underneath it then the wood will just pop off but if there is a chest underneath it then it will put it in the chest so you see it puts two and it gives you sawdust so it also gives apples I don't know if it gives these items without the chest but put the chest under it it's much better so you get two sawdust um, six oak wood and an apple from like a normal sized tree not that it's randomized like the apple but the sawdust what are the uses for sawdust I mean you uses minecraft uses so you can make paper with it so by using three stone and three sawdust and one water bucket you probably get the water bucket back you can make eight paper um, with four sawdust and one water bucket you can make two paper you can make compressed sawdust. I don't know what that does. You can make dry plain sponge from thermal expansion. You can make dry magmatic sponge. You can also make wood, spruce wood apparently, using four sawdust and a charcoal. I don't know if this is Rotocraft. This may or may not be Rotocraft recipes, but they're a thing. Uh, you can also make this stuff that's from thermal expansion. Here's paper, quick line sawdust and water you can make more paper uh, not for motorcraft yeah so it can be used for quite a bit of things um, I think it can be used in the weather controller thing that rotorcraft has but yep then if you want a port like what, what is it it's Nate the mods called nature I think that adds the giant redwood tree but if you for some reason wanted to go cut down one of those you might want to bring this thing and you might want to use a gasoline engine because speed cuts down the tree much faster much faster and if the tree did drop a sapling it will plant it back down if it did not drop the sapling it will not plant the sapling back down but if you want to be sure your sapling will be replanted every single time, then by using an enchanted book with infinity on it, you can right click your woodcutter, and now it's enchanted with infinity. You can't, with the shaders, you can't really see the texture too well, but it's there. You might be able to see it on the corner. Yeah, you kind of saw it there. But it's a thing that happens. Um. And it will be sure to replant your sapling every single time. 
that if you wanted to speed this up, let's say, you could have a fertilizer there. And in the fertilizer, you can use the compost to increase the growth of the oak saplings. You just can't right click on it with the compost for issues. I will show those issues in a minute. But yeah, so that's the woodcutter. Very useful for making a wood farm. And yeah. So again, with the issue with the compost and the oak sapling, I wonder if it still does it. Yeah, very much still does it. So you can see it just makes this bottom oak wood there, but very much still there. Very, the tree is very much still there. And you can't break it because reasons. But you know what can break it? The woodcutter. The woodcutter can break it. So I don't have the wool over the gasoline engine, so it might be a bit loud. Oh, I have to get in there to put this. Oh, no. I, okay, got that down and get this down. Yeah. There we go. And you can hear it cutting, but you, can, you don't see anything. So that's the issue with that. I wonder, and it's not just, it just happens, I don't know why. It works with all other types of stuff. I wonder if the shader displays the shadow of the tree. You know, the shaders, as far as the shaders thinks, there's still only a tree there. The tree stump there. Oh. Interesting. By right clicking, I can, uh, not normal ones, but right clicking on the side. Odd. I don't know what to think of this, but it's kind of annoying. I don't know why it does that. You can still use the fertilizer, I mean the compost and the fertilizer. But yep, that's it for this video. Um, I know it's been a bit long. I don't know, how long has this video even been? Uh, I've been recording for about 40 minutes. Cut like five of those... I don't know. This is going to be a fairly long Rotorcraft tutorial. Again, this is the replacement for the other Rotorcraft tutorial I did. That was, again, five or six. I think this is six. I may be completely wrong, but audio quality was horrible. I fixed it. But, yep. Yeah. So, again, that's it for this episode. Hopefully, you watched the whole thing. And hopefully, you watch the next Rotorcraft tutorial video when it comes out.